Far beyond our Earth, in the direction of the Taurus constellation, lies the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, and Messier 45, an open star cluster just 444 light years from our world. Not close, but not so distant as these things go, because it is, after all, the closest star cluster to our world. And this star cluster is particularly noteworthy for its unearthly beauty. It is surrounded by hues of ethereal blue that, insofar as we know, do not even originate from the star cluster. But we'll come back to that later. The cluster also attains its luminous blue beauty by way of the hot, large blue stars that predominate the light that it gives off. They appear to us as a small version of the Big or Little Dipper, and the seven that are particularly luminous have lent the secondary name, the Seven Sisters, to the Pleiades star cluster. Not so long ago, all astronomers and stargazers could do was to visualize the Pleiades through a telescope and imagine what it would be like to see this majestic structure up close. But these days, thanks to computers and powerful simulators, we can visit, at least in something a bit more solid and repeatable than the imagination, the Pleiades system, and see it up close. The fact that the Pleiades somewhat resembles the Big and Little Dippers is the result of the human mind's need to see patterns that we are familiar with in things. This tendency leads to the Pleiades presenting an asterism, a pattern of stars like a constellation that is in fact not a constellation. It is estimated that there are about a thousand stars in the Pleiades. Most of them are red dwarfs and brown dwarfs. And analyses lead some astronomers to believe that there might be as much as 50% more stars than that within the star cluster. Red dwarfs, and particularly brown dwarfs, are quite dim, making them difficult to observe, and with the thick dust in the region of the Pleiades, they might well be obscured. The nebula surrounding the Pleiades is a reflection nebula. It was once believed that this material was the remnant of the material which formed the stars of the Pleiades. However, more modern analyses have indicated that the stars are moving in a different direction from the dust. This means that the dust is in fact a separate cloud, and the star cluster just happens to be passing through it just now. It is a reflection nebula, meaning that the material of the nebula does not generate its own light through ionization created by the star's energy. The nebulous gas, or stardust rather, reflects the light given off by the stars of the Pleiades especially those bright blue stars. The Pleiades star cluster is young as stars go, many or most of its stars having formed only within the last hundred million years. The large blue and highly energetic star that you see in front of you right now is Maya, and it is one of the brighter stars of the Pleiades that's visible to the naked eye. It also is surrounded by the heaviest concentration of dust within the Pleiades making its nebulous cloud a bit thicker and denser and bluer than the other stars. Maya's blue color comes from the fact that it is young and hot. And a young hot star like this is energetic and gives off a good deal of mass and energy, seen in this imagery as the protuberances emanating from the star. It is significantly larger than our own sun, with 3.8 times the sun's mass and 3.6 times the sun's radius and it is a young star, estimated to be 126 million years old. In mass and radius, it is fairly typical of the hot blue stars that make the Pleiades visible from Earth's skies, though it is one of the younger of the seven sister stars. In time, this star will follow evolution much like our own suns, going through various color and energy phases until the star finally exhausts its fuel. At present, we do not know of any planets surrounding Maya but, rocky, gassy, and icy objects form around systems, including blue stars, and it is not hard to imagine their undetected presence, partly obscured by the dust of the Pleiades, as seen in this visualization. Here we are examining Maya from the imaginary planet Maya 5, 1.59 astronomical units away from the star Maya, placing this fictitious planet about as far from Maya as Mars is from our Sun. But as Maya is a young star, so this is a young planet. 
The rocky disks that formed this planet having coalesced less than 6 million years ago, leaving the planet quite hot from the energy of its formation and doubly superheated from the nearby highly energetic star, thus having a surface temperature of almost 2000 degrees Celsius. And while only a simulated planet in the star system, the simulation does tell us that new planets around new stars are highly unlikely to be candidates for life. We can see here, if we strip the planet's atmosphere away, that the terrain is a lifeless collection of tectonic plates shaped by volcanic activity and former lava rivers. But our fictitious planet is surrounded by five small moons. If we go to the farthest one out, we can gain what one might think of as an eagle-eye perspective of the unique beauty of this hot, young star system. The large blue star Maya dominates the center of the star system, and even from this distance, the energetic jets of plasma and energy being thrown off by the star are plainly visible. As well as a few other rocky worlds, Maya 1, 2, 3, and 4, and countless planetesimals, which, given enough time and luck, might themselves also become planetary bodies as the star system matures. Moving from the simulated view of a star system of the Pleiades back to scientific reality, there is a known possible candidate for planets within the Pleiades star cluster and nebula, HD 23514. Containing 1.35 solar masses, this star is, in size, very similar to our own Sun, but a much younger version. Its age is estimated to be between 35 and 100 million years old, a baby in terms of such stars. The star also has a brown dwarf companion, HD 23514b, about 390 astronomical units away, making it nine times further from the star than Pluto. It is surrounded by a disk of dust and planetesimals, leading astronomers to think HD 23514 is actively forming planets around it. The view of the Pleiades from HD 23514 is spectacular, and from the surface of any world that might exist within the system, the luminous blue hues of the star cluster would dominate the night sky, along with the sights of the nearby vast and majestic Milky Way. The Pleiades is so eye-catching that it has dominated both ancient and modern mythologies, from the stories of the Seven Sisters of the Ancient Greeks, to modern massively multiplayer role-playing games such as Elite Dangerous, in which the Pleiades was home to various mysterious alien intelligent and unintelligent species. But as we can see in this image, only a relatively small portion of the Pleiades is surrounded by nebulous gas. This image, created by Robert Mura, maps the gas's density and locations throughout the overall star cluster. And in this 3D model of the Pleiades star cluster, we can see the cluster is an elongated formation, with the brightest, hottest, bluest stars far to one side. And this is the eye-catching spot that we see, surrounded by luminous blue nebulosity. It is believed that in time, about a quarter billion years, this open star cluster will slowly be pulled apart as it drifts through space, encountering other stars, nebulae, and formations that will pull its various stars in different directions. But until then, it remains a subject of interest to astronomers as the closest star cluster and a target for astrophotographers such as myself and fairly easy to find and shoot. This image was taken with only an 81 millimeter telescope and less than two hours total exposure. Meaning that the Pleiades is a subject that you too can visit on any night, whether just observing with the naked eye, a telescope, or a mere pair of binoculars. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world, in MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In UnderStory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in SkyStory, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.